Don't say Mary home is your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She'll give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home to be his wife. Lord God, just over these next few moments, I thank you that you are indeed God with us. We receive you. We celebrate you. We thank you for all that you have done. As we join in song, as we join in prayer, we celebrate you, Jesus. Amongst the busyness of today, may we pause and remember, indeed, the reason for this season. For you came to us. For a child is born. Who will be Saviour of the world. In Jesus' name, Amen. For Jesus has come. Emmanuel, God with us. The Word became flesh. God with skin on. He came to bring us life and hope and peace and joy. Friends, Mary wrapped her little baby boy in strips of cloth and put him in a feeding trough. His first resting place was a wooden manger. And at the end of his life, he hung upon a wooden cross. Three things this morning. God came to us. In the Gospel of John, in chapter 1, the first three verses we read, In the beginning, the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. And from verse 14 of that same chapter, the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory. The glory of the one and only who came from the Father full of grace and truth. That's who we celebrate. That's who we remember. Do you know the grace of God this Christmas day? The hope of God this Christmas day? Make the most of every day. Don't miss out on the faith in Jesus. Because many people may have let you down. Or maybe there's been hurts and struggles in life. Look to the Son of God. It's relationship, not religion. It's surrender, not self-gratification. It's sacrifice, not selfishness. Not my will, but yours be done. The second thing today, God's time is right. Matthew 1 verse 20. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. God's time is the right time. Maybe over this last week there's been stress and struggle and how am I going to get that done and what will I get for Aunt Merle and what about that and who's doing the ham and, and all this stress and struggle. Friends, God is in control. Let's be honest. God is in control. And sometimes we don't like things and sometimes things seem unfair. And why didn't this happen? And oh no, not another Christmas. How are we going to get through that day? Emmanuel, God with us. 
This first Christmas, God's timing was just right. And for you today, God's timing is just right. And you joined us this Christmas morning to celebrate together and to sing of our Saviour. Christmas Day 2019. We are here to worship the Son of God. For His timing is right. Christmas Day. What a great day to come back to church. But don't make it a one-off experience, amen? Yes, true. Make it every day. God wants you to be worshipping and fellowshipping and gathering with believers every week. And we would welcome you here. As many of you have discovered. Come on in. Come on in. There's room for you. It was Christmas morning and the church pastor was looking over their large nativity scene, getting the church ready, you know, as we do, and make sure everything is just right. And he noticed that Jesus was missing from the nativity scene. So he started to search for Jesus and he looked under the seats and out the back and over to the side, but the baby Jesus had gone. He hunted high and low and he finally walked out the front of the church and there was a little boy. A little boy with a red, with a red wagon. That a good one. And in the red wagon, lo and behold, was... Baby Jesus. So he walked up to the little boy with the red wagon and said, Excuse me, where did you get him? And why did you take out Jesus? The little boy replied, I got him from the church. And why? Well, about a week or so before Christmas, I prayed to Jesus and told him if he would bring me a red wagon for Christmas, I'll give him a ride around the block. <laughs> yes, you can use that one Christmas day, if you like. Around the lunch table. It'd be better than those jokes out of those stupid bonbon things. <laughs> no, I'm not wearing a hat. Well, they never pop, do they? they don't worry, but... <laughs> Sometimes we get very protective about our Jesus, don't we? You know, a little church, a little huddle. Sorry. No. We forget who he came for, don't we? Those that still don't know him. Those that are lost and without hope and without faith. And without joy and without peace. Don't keep Jesus to yourself, but give him away every day. Mary and Joseph accepted God's time as they travelled to Bethlehem. Full of uncertainty, no doubt. And the time came for her to give birth. In a strange place, with no family around her. A stable and a manger and shepherds and livestock. And probably not the night that she had imagined. But Emmanuel came. The hope of the world came. Our Saviour came. And the final thing this morning is God's promises revealed. When the storms of life beat down on us, when God seems distant, when there's hurt and pain, entrust your cares and burdens to Him who unlocks his abundant grace and draws us nearer to his heart. For he is faithful. And he'll do exactly what is needed to make us more like his son, Emmanuel, God with us. For first Peter reminds us to cast your cares. Cast it all. All your anxiety, all your worry, all your care on him. Because he cares for you. When the storms hit and the days are dark, 
He cares for you. And He cares for me. He cared about Mary. He cared about Joseph. For God keeps His promises. It was foretold long ago in the book of Isaiah chapter 7. Therefore the Lord Himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give you birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. God keeps His promises to me and He keeps His promises to you. And I pray you discovered that this year. The shepherd discovered the words of God to them were just as they were told. The wise men followed the star and discovered the child. God keeps his promises. He says to us this day, see my son, he came for you. He came to the world. He saw it all come into being and now he's come to meet you and to meet me. Encounter Christ this day. Feel the touch of His Spirit. Feel the peace of God, the hope of God. Life has its struggles and its annoyances. But He has not forsaken you. He was with Mary and Joseph every moment, working out His plan just as he is with you and me right now, this Christmas and beyond. Christmas reminds us to look beyond that stable. For God is doing something fantastic. You know, if you lift your eyes above Bethlehem for a moment, as we lift our eyes, we may catch a glimpse of that Christmas star pointing the way to our Saviour. Happy Christmas to you all. God bless you. Let's stand and sing. Oh, holy God.